Remember the early days of Nintendo? Video games seemed to be the sole domain of children. Games were advertised in comic books and other children's periodicals, and every advertisement featured a kid using the console. During this period, Nintendo maintained its dominance with a series of AAA titles which, despite being aimed at younger players via their colorful and cute imagery, were also played by more and more adults. But how did Hiroshi Yamauchi transform his great-grandfather's playing card company into a global video game powerhouse? This is the story of how Nintendo was made. Yamauchi was born in 1927 in Kyoto. After his father, Shikanojo Yamauchi, abandoned the family, Hiroshi was raised by his mother and grandmother. World War II forced him to postpone his job and education. He started working at a factory when he was too young to go to war. He enrolled at Waseda University after the war, but left because his grandfather suffered a stroke and was no longer able to run the family's playing card company. Nintendo was founded in 1889 by Yamauchi's great-grandfather, Fusahiro Yamauchi. As a producer of Hanafuda playing cards that specialized in a Japanese-style card that got through the Japanese prohibition on Western products, Hanafuda gained popularity as a stand-in for poker sets in Japanese gambling dens, and Nintendo produced these cards from its home base of Kyoto for many years. Mr. Yamauchi joined the family business in 1949 after his grandfather had a stroke. Nintendo then started creating electronic toys, love motels, and dehydrated noodle packs in the 1960s but they didn't start creating video games until the 1970s. The business decided to enter the US market by making arcade cabinets, after releasing a number of derivative products such as the Color TV Game 6, which was similar to the Magnavox Odyssey. While very successful in Japan, none of the original Nintendo arcade machines did well abroad. Nintendo unexpectedly found themselves with hundreds of cabinets sitting in the Nintendo of America warehouse in Redmond, Washington, and a game that no one wanted to play after Radar Scope a game that had already gone through manufacturing failed. The playing card business was also in terminal decline, and Mr. Yamauchi changed the company's emphasis to a variety of toys until finally discovering success with video games in the 1980s. He was helped by the well-known video game designer, Shigeru Miyamoto, who joined the company in 1977 and created Mario, Donkey Kong, The Legend of Zelda, Wii, and a number of other products. Mr. Yamauchi created a strategy that distinguished him from other Japanese producers of consumer electronics. He began by contracting out manufacturing of Nintendo's video game consoles to smaller manufacturers, which allowed the business to keep a small workforce and incur fewer overhead expenses. Nintendo ensures that prices and profit margins stay high by approving only a few games each year, whether they were created in-house or by outside businesses. Mr. Yamauchi, who led Nintendo from 1949 to 2002, was Japan's most unlikely high-tech success story. Named president of the family business at 22, he steered Nintendo into board games, light-emitting toy guns, and baseball pitching machines, fruitless forays that he later attributed to a lack of imagination before the company arrived at arcade games. Its Donkey Kong and original Mario Bros. became hits and gave rise to Nintendo's widely successful home video game business. The Nintendo Entertainment System, a console first released in Japan in 1983 as Famicom, unseated early leaders in the video game industry, selling more than 60 million units thanks to shrewd marketing, close attention to product quality, and a crop of games based on unlikely yet endearing characters that soon became household names. In 1988, the New York Times wrote, Many Nintendo bestsellers, like Super Mario Bros. 2, are based on wildly preposterous premises noting that the two mustachioed heroes of that game endure various trials such as dodging hammer-swinging turtles and lava balls and man-eating plants in order to save a mushroom princess. But the article concluded, No matter, kids can't get enough of the games. Under Mr. Yamauchi, who professed to not understanding video games, Nintendo went on to dominate the business. When a successor machine was released in 1990, fans camped outside electronic stores for days in anticipation. It sold almost 50 million units. Next came the Nintendo 64 and Nintendo GameCube home consoles, as well as the Game Boy handheld machines. Nintendo dominates the list of all-time top-selling games. In the early 1990s, Mr. Yamauchi found himself in the middle of an international dispute when he offered to buy a majority stake in the Seattle Mariners. 
The team, established in 1977, had threatened to leave Seattle if it could not find a new owner willing to keep it there. Nintendo had its United States headquarters in Seattle. Though the team owners approved the deal, but the commissioner of Major League Baseball, Faye Vincent, and a four-man MLB owners committee initially opposed it. They eventually relented and approved the sale in 1992 after Mariners fans and the Seattle news media rallied in favor of it. In 2001, the Mariners signed the Japanese star outfielder Ichiro Suzuki, now with the Yankees, helping to open the door for many more Japanese players to join Major League teams in the United States. In a show of his characteristic detachment, however, Mr. Yamauchi confessed at the time that he was not very interested in baseball either. He said he had never gone to a baseball game, and it's thought that he has never gone since. One of his few hobbies was a Japanese board game, Go, which he's played at a master's level. There were some misfires under Mr. Yamauchi's watch. The company's cumbersome, headache-inducing Virtual Boy portable console, a red box on legs with rubber visors that players peered into to play games in 3D was a flop. And beginning in the late 1990s, first Sony and then Microsoft steamrolled into the gaming market with new consoles, the PlayStation and Xbox respectively, challenging Nintendo's dominance. Mr. Yamauchi stepped down in 2002 telling reporters, I have no energy left. Under Satoru Iwata, the current Nintendo president, the company roared back with its Nintendo DS handheld machine and the Wii home game console. In one of his last interviews with the magazine Nikkei Business in 2003, Mr. Yamauchi offered his wisdom in a longer view of the gaming market. At the time, Nintendo was being pummeled by Sony's immensely popular PlayStation 2 console. But he scoffed at suggestions that the battle for supremacy in gaming was over. That's absolutely wrong. The gaming wars? They will never end, he said adding, that's just not how this business works. Nobody knows what tomorrow will bring. Well, that concludes our look at the meteoric rise of Nintendo. While Mr. Yamauchi is quite right that none of us know what tomorrow will bring, what company do you think will dominate the gaming world in the coming years? Nintendo? Microsoft? Sony? Maybe another company? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. For more inspiring business stories, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you in the next video.